My name's Adam, I'm from Khan Academy, and I want to talk about how we deal with global things inside our code. So this is all up on GitHub, and I'll show you the link at the end. Um, this is the, what this code is doing is not important. What is interesting is how we access them, like this database, or the client, or the request. Um, in this code, those are global variables. Now, you're all smart gophers. You know, never use global variables. They're bad. Uh, but let's talk about why. Uh, global variables are bad because this function doesn't document what it uses. We don't know that it uses the database by looking at the function signature. We don't know what else it might use. Uh, database read here, this uses things globally. So I can't even just look at this code and see what this code uses. This is bad because database read could start using some new thing that I never knew it used. Um, it's bad because if I want to do multiple requests at a time, this request is a global variable, so I can't do that. And testing this code is tricky because I have to mock out all of the resources. I don't even know what all the resources are. So I know none of you have ever used global variables, but why would we? Well, we use it because it's simple. You don't have to write all this stuff down. You just call the database. It's great. So is there something we can do to not have this dependency problem, but still have easy code? So let's look at another example. In this code, we have listed every single dependency that we have. We've listed the request. We've listed the database. We've also had to list things like our secret server because the database uses it. And we have to pass it in. This is a little ugly. It's especially ugly on lines like this, where I have to get all of these parameters in the right order, and if the database read command starts taking some new resource, I have to add it here, and then go check in my list of parameters. Do I already have one of these? And if I don't, I have to add it, and give it a name, and make sure the names match. It's not great. So this gives us explicit dependencies, but it makes everything else a mess. Now, what a lot of people do to access resources like this is they'll have some kind of server object. Uh, this is literally usually a struct that contains things. So I have my server database, and I can call read on it. Or I have my server request, and I can call whatever on it. Um, this is nice because I can have multiple requests in flight at once, right? And any new resource ends up in this server. So at least I can look and see like what does the server provide. But there's still a really big problem here. I don't know what parts of the server I use. In practice, I've seen companies that might have 40 different resources on the server. And if I use two of them, well, I haven't really documented that. And in particular here, like database read again, if I call this function and give it the whole server, it can access any resource. Well, that's not great, because now if they make a change, I don't know. So we still don't have the explicit dependencies. Some people like to use context for this instead of the server. Um, the context is just a thing that has some timeouts, and it has some cancellation stuff, and you can stuff random stuff in it. Doesn't really change anything. It actually makes it a little uglier. So what can we do? Well, what does Go have when it wants to fix something? It has interfaces. Let's look at what we can do with an interface here. So what I've done in this code is taken the server, but instead of taking the object by type, I take an interface. Each of these is an interface. So something like server database here, this call, this is what my database server is here. This means that I can declare in my function declaration that I need a server upon which I can get the database. So I've explicitly said that I use the database. But everything else that that server object has that I haven't asked for in the interface, I can't touch. Now, when I call database read, it takes the server. It actually takes a subset of my server. It doesn't need all of this functionality. But as long as my functionality is a superset, I just pass the server. I don't have to think about which parameters I need to pass. I just pass the whole thing. Um, if someone changes database read, so now it needs the widget server, well, my code breaks at compile time because my interface doesn't contain widget server. I have to decide, do I want to take that dependency on the widget server? If I do, I add one line right here, widget server. My code compiles. Obviously, code that calls me has the same concern. 
unless they already have a dependency on the widget server, in which case it just works. The server they have, they pass it in, it just compiles. At compile time, we verified that all the dependencies have been declared. So everything is great except the function signature. It actually does list the dependencies, but this is kind of the opposite of explicit dependencies. You, you, need, you need one of those, right? Can we make it one step simpler? You'll notice this is the, the server code. We pass the context everywhere, and we pass the server everywhere. Hmm, a lot of you are not going to like this, but this is what we've done at Khan Academy. We have combined the context and our server interface into this single thing. Every function takes a context, declares which parts of the context it needs to be able to use, and it passes it on to every function underneath it. The code is simple. We can inject mocks and tests very easily. Everything is declared, and it's compile time guaranteed that there's no weird dependencies missing. Um, so we get everything, plus we get some stars. It's great. So. All of this uh, is a, a little more in depth in uh, our, the Khan Academy engineering blog. We have something up about statically typed context, which is what we call this. And I'd encourage you to go have a read. Code is available on GitHub. You can actually compile these. We also have a linter that makes sure you're using the minimum interface so you're not declaring dependencies you're not really using. So I'd love to talk with anyone about it. And if you want to try and defend that context should never be used in that horrible way, come meet me afterwards and we'll have a duel. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>